Pacific Police, 843. What is the location of your emergency? I need ambulance immediately. My son's not breathing. I fell down and banged his head. I told my kid in the shower to try and help him out a little bit. Sure. What's your name? My name is Michael. I'm a police officer with the city of New York. My son, I think he's... I don't know if he's breathing or not. I don't know if his heart stopped. He fell down on his way to the bus. He banged his head pretty good. I brought him in, and I'm doing CPR right now. All right. How old is he? Eight years old. I'm Samantha Baldwin, a children's rights campaigner and author, and my mission is to expose the secret family court. Before I start this introduction, it's important to say that this video comes with a trigger warning. Research in this case has been extremely harrowing, more than any other case that I've read about. There are so many similarities between this case and my own case, including how the family court ignored my son's disclosures and removed my custody. Please share this video widely. Justina Zuko Valva has made an emotional plea asking people to share the real story about her children's horrifying and sadistic abuse. You won't read about all of the facts of this case in most of America's mainstream media. The truth about what the family court and the police are doing to cover up child abuse and suppressing evidence. This is exactly what has happened in my case. To my knowledge, there is only one media outlet in America, PIX11, that has reported on the surviving Valva children's disclosures of trafficking and sadistic abuse involving many people and large amounts of cash. The Valva case is very similar to my own case. My sons are living with their abuser who sadistically and sexually abused them, drugged them and handed them over to be abused by many others and they have been prevented from any contact with me, their mummy, for over three years. There are so many similarities within our cases. This is a worldwide issue. The family court justice system is guilty of sending countless children to be abused and murdered. The script is the same across the globe. Report your children's disclosures of sexual abuse to the authorities and lose them to their abuser. Why are the courts untouchable and why aren't people in positions of power doing something to stop these atrocities? I want to end this introduction by urging you to watch this video right to the end. I know many of you won't want to watch this as it's so upsetting. However, this type of abuse is rampant and most people can't believe that seemingly normal, respectable people can commit such evil acts on children but trust me, it is more common than you can imagine. You could be the parent, the neighbour or teacher of a child that is, ab that is being abused right now. It is so important to know how these abusers operate. Watching this video could save a child's life. Mothers like me, Justina and countless others are crying out for our children's voices to be heard. Tommy's mother, Justina, fought tirelessly to protect her sons from their dangerous and abusive father, Michael Valva, a police officer. The family court ignored Justina and her sons and awarded custody to their father, which resulted in Tommy's death. At the end of this video is footage from Justina describing the truth behind her son's horrific abuse and how the DA office is covering up something much bigger than most news reports have reported on. Back in 2004, Justina Zubko, a Polish immigrant, got married to Michael Valva. They had three sons together. The eldest was born in 2009, the middle son Tommy was born in 2011 and the youngest son was born in 2013. In 2014, Justina discovered that Michael was having an affair with Angela Polina. Michael filed for divorce and moved in with Angela in 2015. In June 2015, Justina's sons made detailed allegations of sexual abuse by their father and Angela. All three sons described the abuse being filmed on video. Justina filed a police report. Here is Justina's statement outlining her son's disclosures. However, the police decided not to investigate. The CPS, or the Family Court as it's called in the UK, ignored the boys' details disclosures of sexual abuse and stated that Michael and Angela were innocent and had not abused the boys. It was then that Michael Valver filed false accusations of child abuse against Justina. In his attempt to turn their sons against their mother, Michael Valver forced his sons into repeating false statements about her and repeatedly brainwashed them into saying that they loved him and Angela. 
Justina obtained the audio evidence of this brainwashing and later posted the audio clips on Twitter. Who do you love? Daddy. Who do you want to stay with? Daddy. Who do you miss? Daddy. Who do you want to live with? Daddy. Mommy is mean. Daddy. Mommy hits me. Mommy hits me. Mommy, don't touch me. Mommy, don't touch me. I love Angela. I love Angela. I love Daddy. I love Daddy. What do you say, Anthony? I love Angela. I love Angela. I can't hear you. Who's it say? I love Angela. I love Angela. Louder, Anthony. <laughs> Anthony, I love Angela. I, I love Angela. I love Daddy. I, I love, love Daddy. I love you, Anthony. I love you. Can I have more water? I'm thirsty. Um, I'll get you some more water. Anthony, do you love Stop me? It. Do you love me? Mommy waiting for you? Yeah. So what happened? What she's gonna do? Put you upstairs? What's gonna happen upstairs? I can't hear you. Nothing. nothing. And then what's gonna happen? Nothing to eat and drink. She can do that, baby. That's why you were afraid to come to mommy. Yeah. Are you going? It's okay, baby. Here are some excerpts from the transcripts from the hearing in September 2017 when Judge Zimmerman switched custody to Michael Valver. She has made unfounded allegations of sexual abuse against my client, Michael Valver's lawyer, Sharni Curti, told Zimmerman. She has taken the children for rape kits. She has not complied with your Honour's order with respect to meeting with the attorney for the children. 
She has not complied with the order with respect to the forensic. She's not complied with any order. There's a disconnect from reality, Curtie added. Curtie insisted her client would provide a good, loving home. They will be safe, she told Zimmerman. Two years later, the boy would be dead, with the father having allegedly taunted his son for being cold as he died from hours of sleeping on a concrete floor in an unheated garage. And this is the judge. This is Judge Zimmerman. So this is Justina's Twitter account, Stand Against Child Abuse. She set it up in January 2018. She's documenting all the evidence that her children are being harmed and abused by their father and his girlfriend. She has video evidence, um, audio evidence of him and his girlfriend brainwashing their children. So she's put his father, his girlfriend, a brainwashing my sons, teaching hatred towards their mummy. This little boy talks about, is terrified about, and about being punished by his father for coming to mummy. All this evidence was ignored. The family court don't care about evidence. How many more children have to die? They just literally don't care about children. They're physically abusing them by squeezing their hands hard so that they cry when they see their mummy. And then she tweets in, in November 2018, I don't even know if my children are still alive at this point. And then she asks for prayers. The Child Protective Services in the court are protecting the abusers of my children and sweep everything under the rug. I am heartbroken because my children are being purposely hidden from me and unlawfully. I am not being allowed to see my children even on Thanksgiving. So the school that uh, the boys attended were getting very concerned about the children. Uh, they noticed bruising on um, on the buttocks, arms, upper thighs, and they had weight concerns because the children were re losing weight rapidly. Uh, one of the children indicated his bottom hurt, and he want, he walked bent over at the waist. Um, told him that his father told him to say he does not does not get hit in his house, and that we love each other. Um, reported always being hungry, and that he only gets a shake for breakfast and wants more food. Also that um, they appear to have deteriorated after the Christmas break. Both children have been demonstrated emotional instability, uh, losing weight again. Um, she indicated that the eldest child reported to that he had been punished over the weekend and required to stay in his room. He had his bottom iced at school because he complained that his bottom hurt a lot. He cried, said he didn't eat breakfast. Um, lost a considerable amount of weight after being in his father's custody. Um, she states that the children had functioning had deteriorated, that minor events seemed to upset them and trigger intense emotional reactions. Um, for example, the eldest boy screamed frantically after ripping a paper crown that he had earned. She noticed the sty in his eye. He got very upset and screamed that he can't go to the nurse because he's not allowed. Um, so the school contacted the CPS, which is a family court, in response to this. Nothing was done.
um, Suffolk County DA's office who are covering up um, this whole case. What truly happened to the children? How severely, sadistically, and in, in, in what horrific way they were abused, not only physically and mentally, but also sexually. As a part of therapy, um, my children were asked to draw pictures of what they remember, what their memories are, what happened to them. So I'm not going to name who drew it. Obviously, it was either Anthony or Andrew. At first, my kids asked to give them a black crayon. Um, and this is, James, can you help me hold this? So this is the first picture. And as you see, there are um, video cameras right from the ceiling. There are free jail cells, but the children, my son described it as one of many jail cells, like the place was prepared to production, severe production of child trafficking. They were locked. Kids were tied with ropes. This person here, um, his name was Mac. According to my son, he was the biggest abuser. He was holding a wooden log in a circular shape that the children were beaten with. And it was a dark place and inability for my children to um, use, obviously, the bathroom, nothing to eat or drink. That's the first picture. Um, can I take the next one? All right, so this picture um, shows um, two of my children, my son and Tommy. My son who chose this picture. This is the picture of Satan, the statue with big claws and sharp teeth and horns. And the children were placed in like um, cages uh, where they would, they would stretch their arms high. They were tied with some white tape, white tape. Their mouths were tied with duct tape. Um, they couldn't scream just severe. Um, I can't imagine what was going through their minds, how hopeless they must have felt being so severely abused uh, by those abusers. Um, this picture, um, the place where they went, um, definitely um, had, um, you know, other um, there were a lot of people there too, and um, that picture was taken from um, the clown funeral home. This one, as you see, we have the coffin. There were chairs on both sides, with the people dressed as a clowns. They also had a chainsaw. Um, they had a picture of scary Satan and um, pretty much that was, I guess that was the second part of the, of, of the previous picture that I showed you, what was happening to the children. And we have two more. So we have... Um, picture draw by um, one of my sons. It show um, it show Anthony, Thomas and Andrew. There were five men abusing them. They had uh, uh, metal spikes that was placed in children's anuses after which the children were sexually abused. Um, we also have Angela and Michael, who were also present there, um, according to children's testimony, they also took a part in sexually abusing the children. We also have a shot. Those are the injections that were played to the anuses. So that's the picture. And this picture is from Michael's and Angela's home, when the abusers would come and abuse them. 
and we all know that Suffolk County District Attorney's Office right there, they've seen all of it, they're covering up, they've seen the images, everything was video recorded, everything um, was um, documented, they're able to get all those images. They know personally probably the names of those abusers. And the last one. So this picture is from the children being abused in some place. We will describe the video cameras, picture Satan, two openings where there would be those uh, people dressed as a clowns peek through. And they had those three cages where they would place my three children in it. Um, now I know more information that the cages were um, were, were, were painted um, also black, but the cages were locked. And those people right here, those are the clowns with the chainsaw that would completely terrify the children to death if they would say anything to anybody. And one thing that I'm going to share with you that was shared by one of my sons um, during, um, during this horrible event, uh, my youngest son, Andrew, he actually was able to somehow manipulate with the ropes and he, he you know, get the tape a little bit out. And he was trying to save the other two, but those abusers must have heard it. Obviously, they had the camera, they watched everything. So as soon as they found out that my son was calling for help, trying to save the other, quickly came. And he was so severely beat up and punished. And usually after all of that, the kids wouldn't even be sent to schools in fear of my Angela, they would say something or discover the injuries so I want you to know I'm so I know one day my kids will be seeing this they are my heroes and what they went through I don't know if any of us would be able to go through the horrific abuse is hard to even imagine reading the reports and uh, listening to my kids' testimony, but it happened to them, and it's happening right now to other children. Please share this. Share this with anyone you can think of. And let's stop this abuse. Let's enforce and enforce all those officials to do their job to stop the child trafficking, arrest the abusers involved in my kids' death, in my, in my son's tummy death, and severe abuse of my other children. Unfortunately, I know the life of my children and mine is in danger because we're exposing this. But I trust in God, who is the biggest protector of everyone. Am I completely... Um, put myself and my children in his hands and let him guide this process and I know one day when my kids grow up they're gonna know that their mom did everything what she could have done to protect them and expose this because this abuse cannot go unpunished I'm truly hoping that it's gonna bring changes and um, if there are anybody who is criticizing this, it's just because either they are involved, they've been receiving money for this abuse, or they just truly are not supposed to, um, you know, are, are, are not standing for fighting for justice for children, protecting the most innocent from all of us. So God bless everyone, and I wish you guys a blessed and safe day. Take care. Bye. See you. Thomas's death cannot be in vain. As Justina said in her video, this is happening to children right now. 
My own sons are in danger as we speak. There are so many characteristics in our cases that are the same, such as the brainwashing, the, the drawings of rituals, the many abusers, money being exchanged, injections, food and drink deprivation, women involved. My sons were forced into saying that they loved their father. I also have um, audio recordings of my eldest son describing how his father would brainwash him and artwork drawn by my then three-year-old son depicting horrific rituals. These cases are never reported unless it's too late and a child is murdered. These hearings are conducted in secret. There is no jury, no reporting allowed and a crude balance of probabilities used to determine decisions, meaning that judges can make up findings with zero evidence whilst ignoring the real evidence. My case was only reported on because I defied the court and fled with my sons for 10 days. Judge Lee ordered 100 police officers to hunt me and my sons down in the middle of the night. They were ripped, screaming from my arms at 1am. I had done nothing wrong, yet I was treated like a dangerous criminal, falsely accused of the father's crime of drugging. The evidence that I took into court was used against me. Justina fought tirelessly to protect her sons from their dangerous father and everyone ignored her. The family court ignored me and my sons and judges like Zimmerman and Jeremy Lee are aiding and abetting child abusers. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and please share it with everyone you know.